Good evening. Our first song this evening will be Sweet By and By.
All right, please stand. What gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is only bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. To this I hope, my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley he will lead. For the night has been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I.
Okay, so now it's time for prayer. If you guys can get in groups of two or three and pray. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Um, please be with Abraham as he speaks, and I pray that your Holy Spirit please be with him, that you calm his nerves, and that you help him to deliver the message that you want him to. In Jesus' name, amen.
Caritas. Okay. Good evening, everybody. How are you today? Praise God. Trust and obey. That's love. One of my favorite music. Amen. <laughs> oh, two months ago, one month ago, Mina came to me and asked, Abram, would you, would you speak for a week of prayer? I said, here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. I said, here we go again, God. What am I going to speak today? For today, I mean. And I said, no, Lord, don't, please, don't let me, don't give this experience again. No, please. But God said, mm -mm, it's time for you to speak, my, 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 my son. And I said, what am I going to speak? And God said, speak about your life. Speak about God's faithfulness in your life. And I said, okay, God, I'll do it. How are you blessed for this week of prayer? I am so blessed for this week of prayer. I have goosebumps every time when I listen to their experience, when I listen their testimonies are very, very amazing. I have goosebumps right now. Because the Holy Spirit is right here, amen? I have a presentation. Stop shaking hands. Don't be afraid. Okay. Oops, I forgot to turn it on. There you go. Mm. <laughs> there you go. Africa. No, I'm not going to talk about Africa. <laughs> okay, today I'm going to talk about God's faithfulness in our lives. God's faithfulness. I have a question. What does faithfulness mean to you? What does faithfulness mean to you in your life? Can everybody um, answer that question? No one? Oh, okay. Ah, to be loyal. I like that. Trustworthiness. That's one of them too. That's, that's, that's exactly one. That's true. Trustworthiness. The second one is dependability. You, you're, you're faithful for someone because you depend on someone. And of course, do what they say. Thank you. Now, Mr. Wiki says, <laughs> I found this Mr. Wiki, not Google. No, I'm not, I'm not at Google. Hey, that, that's not, I'm not offending, but Mr. Wiki says that faithful is the concept of unfailingly remaining loyal to someone or something and putting that loyalty into consistent practice regardless of extenuating circumstances. Remainingly loyal. Loyal to someone or to something. Loyal to God. This is how the world says. That's Mr. Wiki says. But the Bible said you're faithful to someone because... You trust Him. You have trusted. You depend on Him. Putting that loyalty into consistent practice. That's true. Being consistent in someone, regardless, and consistent practice regardless of excellent circumstances. What is the perfect example? I'll give you a hint. What is the perfect example? Of being faithful to someone. What is the what's the perfect example? Hmm, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. You don't know what it is? Mm. Okay. I'm not talk I'm not talking about marriage. I'm not talking about marriage. I'm not there yet. But marriage <laughs> Oh have mercy. No, no, no. If you are, okay, that's good for you, not for me. <laughs> okay. Marriage is the perfect example that God, show, that God gives you being loyal to someone. Amen? Amen. A, a man and a woman 
they're loyal to someone. Remember when they marry, when they, when at the marriage, they have vows. What are they vows? What the vows is? What are the vows is? You're loyal even though when you're rich and poor, when you're sick and healthy, until death separates them. That is loyalty. That is faithfulness. But how much faithful it is, God is unto you. I'm not talking about marriage, but I'm talking about the Father that is always faithful unto you since you were born, since even since you're in the womb. He's loyal unto you. What an amazing picture, right? You can see that picture. A man is hugging Jesus. He's, you see that? Jesus is ready. He is ready. When you have weaknesses, when you have problems, He is ready. He is ready to take all your problems. He's re- he is ready to take all your weaknesses. I like the banner right there. To let our weaknesses display God's strength. Amen. I love that quote. And that changed my life. Oh, praise God. That's my family. I live in Indonesia. 32 hours trip from Indonesia. I have to go 30 hours trip by plane, not walking. Have mercy. (laughs) Or by rowing boat. Oh, have mercy, though. (laughs) I will not be here. I'm from Indonesia, and it's far, far away. But thank God I'm here to go to school here. That's my family. I'm the first son. I have a brother. His name is Daniel, and a sister, Abigail. That's my dad. His name is Ramon, and my mom, Shandy. He is, my parents are very, very, I love them. They educate me very, very I don't know how to say it. I, I just love them. If my parents are here, I, hello. <laughs> That's me when I was little. So we moved to the countryside. We live like in the city when we were little. But my dad decided to go to the countryside to have a, you know, a simple life. Because before that, my parents, they were like um, finding, uh, I don't know, I don't, how do I say this? Excuse my English, by the way. English is not my first language. My parents, they are before. There's, actually, my dad is a Adventist. My mom is not. My mom, she, she grew with two different beliefs at her family. Her father is Muslim, and her mother is Christian Pentecost. But my dad is Seventh-day Adventist, pure Seventh-day Adventist, his grandpa is Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, I don't know what to say. His, all his generation is Seventh-day Adventist. But my dad, even though he's Seventh-day Adventist, he's, he was in the world before. He was looking the world. He was looking. He was like um, searching for money for himself. He was, he was looking for the riches of the world. But then he decided to follow God. Amen. He said, he, he said to himself that this is not right. Until in the end, he, uh, even though he said Seventh-day Adventist, he, he was reborn again. And he found Jesus. And my mom, she was baptized because of my father and accept Jesus as his Savior. Praise God. My, that's, okay, that's Daniel, my brother. We're, <laughs> we love to go. Oh, okay. So I live in the foothill of the mountain, which is two hours from the city. And we are outdoor kids. Do, are there any outdoor kids here? Amen. Indoor kids? No, amen too. Good. I, I'm not offending you guys, but praise the Lord for that. I love outdoor. I love dirt biking. I love, you know, I, I have a Jeep. I love go. I love go everywhere. Like, you no know, walk in the mountain. I will like go, um, bring, I, I mean, I don't want to say this. I, will, I, I, I drive my Jeep for like an hour. Then... Walk for two hours to the jungle. I like doing that in my life. My, with my brother, sometimes with my dog, and that's my sister. Her name is Abigail. She is very, very amazing. She's very artistic, though. One time I challenged her 
to draw an eye. Only an eye. Only an eye. I said, I challenge you. I'll, I, I'm, proving, I'm proving her that I'm, I, could draw, I could draw better than her. And I, I opened a paper, I drew my pencil, and I, did, I, I, I drew it the best that I could. And when I draw, I, I show it to her and she laughs, have mercy. And she, 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 she showed her drawing, and her drawing is so... I said, how could you draw like that? Only by a pencil? It's so realistic. Very, very realistic. I can see all the shapes, all the black. I mean, the, the pupil or the shape of her eye is very realistic. I don't have the picture, though. I'm sorry. But the picture is... I mean, the drawing is so realistic. And I said, ah, I give up. You're talented. I'm not. But God said, hey, I give you talent. That's fair. I give you other talent, which is running. Who loves to run? I love to run. I love sport when I was little. I love to play. I love to swim. I love to bike. I love to cycle. I love to other sports, except football. Look at my body. Have mercy. <laughs> if someone just put, bam! Where's Abraham? <laughs> oh, have mercy. No, 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 no. I, I can't play. I, I would love to play football one time, but I, that's a bad idea. No, no. But hey, but I can run faster than you football players. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> okay, that's the view of, of my home. That's the foot of the mountain. That's my brother Daniel. That's like three hours walk from our home. That's the jungle. So we like to go. You know, we, we bring our walkie-talkies. Hey, Daniel, are you there? I'm here. Daniel, are you there? What are you talking about? I'm behind you. <laughs> yeah, we want to bring our walkie-talkies everywhere we go. And we know we love to enjoy nature, right? The, the spirit of prophecy is that nature is the second example that God is there. You know, it's okay to go to nature. Well, it is okay to go to nature. That's, yes. I was to bring my dog... And I bring Daniel with me. I go camping. We spend like three nights. Oh, no, not three nights. That's too long. Uh, I like two nights or one day camping. You know, being our food, survive there, be survival. And I will go with my friends too to go. And that's the view. From, two hour, from one hour driving with the Jeep, then park right there and... Um, Walk, not run. Walk for two hours. And that's, yeah, we, we do that like almost two times a week, I think so. Yeah. Two times a week or sometimes three times if we're not busy. That's like our free time. And also, we have a television network. My dad has a television network. It's the first satellite, it's the first Seventh day Adventist um, satellite television in Indonesia. So, um, he was blessed with that, and we, we, we had it since 2011. And I am an editor and programmer for HBN Indonesia, so I do edits, videos, and cameraman and setting up cameraman. And also, my brother also involved with it. And um, I'm pretty blessed. So I grew, with, I, I grew up in the media. Yeah, I do edit stuff, make videos, and... I, I, don't, I don't spend a lot with them. I mean, I mean, I don't spend a lot of time with computers. I love computers, but I can't handle too long with computers. I, I, I don't want to lose my eyes, amen? <laughs> oh, there you go. So, yeah, me and, brother, we're, me and my brother, we're just like co-responders for, for my dad, you know? Every day, uh, my dad will say, Abraham, go make videos in nature video. I will go with my brother and make some nature videos. Abraham, go to the city, make some shots. I will go with my brother, make some shots. So we're just like partners. And um, I will take some, I will, I will make, I mean, how do you say this? I'm the one who take ground footages, and my brother is the drone pilot. Oh, every time I want to, I said, Daniel, can I fly your drone? Nah. <laughs> my brother said, um, sure, but um, you're not a pilot, have mercy. But I said, hey, I'll take a PPL, private pilot license, and why is that? I could, I could drive PPL. I mean, I would love to have a PPL, private pilot license. But then, no, that's not a small drone. 
Wait, is this a video? Oh, I think this is. Oh, I want to show you a video about Indonesia, a little bit about Indonesia, and also about our mission work in Indonesia. Oh. Is there, um, okay, I need sound. I'm not deaf. <laughs> there you go. That's a good sign. Oops. Oh, no. Is it work? Well, working, I will explain. So in Indonesia, we have about 17,508 islands. One country. 17,500 islands with more than 700 languages. Woo! I know for local languages, but I'm not fluent, but I know, I understand. And um, their languages are, are way different, you know, very, very different. But we have this one language that everybody knows, which is Bahasa Indonesia. So that's a good thing. Is it working? Ah, okay. Amen. With different ethnic, three hundred ethnic, I mean, three hundred distinct ethnic, ethnic groups, different ethnic groups. Seven hundred forty-two different languages. Third largest. Democracy. Religious freedom, amen. Oh no. Have mercy. <laughs> yeah, that's me. A million years ago. is a vast country, it consists of uh, 17,000 islands plus, and um, more than 400 ethnic groups, a diverse uh, language and uh, tribes. It has 256 million dad, people, population, and majority, 90% of whom are really Muslim background. And Seventh-day Adventist Church uh, has members uh, which is up to 300,000, I heard. So roughly, we are one member for every 850 people. The gospel television has never really been in existence until 2011. That's the first time we took on the satellite. I was nine we years old then. signed a contract with uh, one of the two satellite providers in Indonesia. And as soon as we took on the satellite, we, we started to see the response uh, coming from, from people from different parts of uh, Indonesia, even beyond. 
How do we bring gospel to people who have no idea, people who are already prejudiced against uh, what we believe? Without them even knowing, you know, what, what Christianity is like, they, they already reject the idea. So even the television, when we, we uh, broadcast via satellite, they see portions on television that has uh, Christianity, anything that has to do with Christianity. They, a lot of them actually just turn away from the, from the channels before they even uh, start to learn what we're all about. Especially when we televise uh, anything that has an um, English program, they just think anything that comes from, mm. from the Western world and from America, they will just shun it right away. Uh, so we are challenged to, to produce programs that are friendlier, that are more acceptable you know, to them without uh, sending them away too quick. Many times we ask ourselves, is it, is it really, really, really worth it? But the way we see it, we're reaching uh, potentially 18 million homes because according to data that Indonesia uh, satellite dish users uh, reach up to 18 to 20 million homes installing this parabola uh, satellite dishes and then that's that's where we are majority of our seventh day Adventist uh, churches are located in big cities while our signals are being uh, accepted majority in the smaller cities you know in the islands mountain faraway places some people have only live in the islands they, they have no means of transporting themselves to the nearest church which is on the other island and, and with the television it's like we don't have to go there, they, they, they get, they're able to see us. You know, this is what excites me. Uh, so any, any cost, I guess, we can justify. That's my home. Praise God. Indonesia is the only country that are different than many tribes and ethnic groups, but we are one. I can't imagine our first president. He unites us all. I don't know how, but I, I believe that God helped him. But this is just an example in our world. Later when Jesus comes, we all will be united. Amen. This is not our home. Our home is in heaven. We'll be right there eating together. Speak one language, of course. Okay. As you, say, as you can see, this is um, ministry, in the ministry that um, my family work in. We keep working because of God's faithfulness in us, amen? I want to tell you a story to illustrate what I mean by that. Oops, nope, that's not a story, okay. The first, the first year of our television broadcast, we made good payouts on satellite. $15,000 every month, and God is always there to pay his bills. But sometime in 2012, we found ourselves in a situation where we couldn't pay. Satellite companies have an automated, uh, sorry, satellite companies have an automated system that if payment is not received on a certain day for the month, the signal will turn off automatically. One day, my father received a call to warn of the situation. You, play, you paid late. My dad told the company he was working on it. My father asked for an extension of the grace period. The company gave us a week. The following week, we found out that the money was still wasn't there. But my parents decided to go see the company in person to ask for more grace period, possibly another week or so. And they got dressed and they went to the car and they started. Uh, they they drove the car and the, uh, with the traffic in Jakarta. Oh, you can see. Did you see the 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 city in Jakarta? It's a very big city, huh? But the traffic, have mercy. You wake up, you go at six. Sometimes you will you will be in in the destination you want at eight, or sometimes at nine. This is pretty bad. A lot of people in my country. Oh my mercy. The following week, we found out the money was still wasn't there. But, yeah, okay. 
And they got dressed, and they, went to the, they drove the car, traffic of Jakarta, but they went at 10 in the morning. While sitting in traffic, their BlackBerry then was giving notice of an email. Do you know a BlackBerry phone? It was so popular back then, huh? But now I don't know what happened to them. Oops, here we go again. Hmm. Well, anyway. While sitting in traffic, they opened their email and found a message that came from someone they didn't know. It says this, Hello, my name is Thomas. We don't know each other, but my father died and he left me with a good sum of money. I was inspired to help work somewhere in Asia. He didn't say that he was Christian. And I came across the work that you do. So this person, he said, he has, he has some money. His father died. And he has some money from his father, all the treasure, I mean, all the, what he has. And he want, to, he want to donate this money to a ministry in Asia. He said he, he opened an internet, the first thing I know, Google. He opened Google and he started click, 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 and found a ministry in, in, in Asia. I don't know how it would be, but I think God, I don't know. I was inspired to help work somewhere in Asia. He didn't say that he was a Christian. And I came across the work that you do. And I was inspired to participate. I sent you funds a few days ago. Please check your bank. The morning before they got in the car that day, we were all praying about the situation. And we asked the Lord to give money. No, to give faith. Why my, God, my, why, why my dad said faith? Because money is not important. Yes, money is important. But faith is more important. When, 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 when we have troubles, when we have any problems in our lives, don't ask the solution. Ask yourself why. Ask God why. Give me faith, Lord. Because why? That's the sign of faithfulness to you with God. We ask the Lord to give faith. That's what we need more than we needed the money. Because that morning, the money wasn't there in the account yet. Sure enough, by 10 in the morning, when they read the email, they called the bank. And the bank told them that there was a transfer that came in just minutes before they called. So the money is already there before we prayed. Can you see God's faithful in that? And the bank told them that there was a transfer that came just minutes before they called. The amount was exactly the amount we needed, $15,000. I'm not talking about prosperity gospel right now. No. But I'm talking what kind of God we serve. When they heard that, they didn't go to the satellite company. Instead, they made the payment right away. They made the payment right away, and they went home. Until today, we never got to know who the guy was. Thomas, I don't, we don't know he, where he is right now. When parents went, when my parents went home, we all cried. We all cried not because of the money. Well, yes, because of the money a little bit. But we cried because we know what kind of God we serve. Can God give money? Can God give money to someone's pocket? Yes. Can God uh, change the clouds to be money? Yes. Can God give money right here, right now? Yes. But why can He? Why He didn't do that to us? Why He? Why can't He do that to us? So we can learn to be faithful in Him, dependability in Him. To depend on Him more because money is nothing. Yes, money is important, but for God, money is nothing. We don't need to, 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 be, um, to enjoy the riches of the world because they are temporary. But God is eternal. You may lose 
your money one time. But even though you lose God, He will come to you. He will come to you and ask you, Abraham, are you there? My brother, family God, family God, are you there? I'm knocking with your hearts now. If God is knocking your hearts, is He outside or inside? He's outside. Have mercy. He wants you to go. He wants you to let Him come to your heart. Because why? He is faithful. Joshua 1 verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you. So before you pull your foot, God said, I have given unto you, Abraham. I have given unto you, Gla family. Don't be afraid. When Jesus said, fear not. When Jesus said, don't be afraid. What does it mean? It's a very simple question. What does it mean when Jesus said, don't be afraid? Because he knew that we are afraid. Because he knew that we're full of fear. That's why God said, don't be afraid. Come, oh, that word. (sighs) That one word that Jesus said, come. He's ready to come to you. The choice is with us. Do we want to come with Christ? Oops. Okay. Is it wrong to be wealthy? Hmm. Is it wrong to have a lot of money? One time there's a, a young man came to me and said, Abraham, is it wrong to be wealthy? And I said, okay, why do you want to be wealthy? Why do you want to have a lot of money? And he said, well, having money is good. You can do anything you want. Okay. I told him, money cannot change everything. Money cannot solve anything. There was a saying, money could, be, money could be a good servant but a bad boss. When you use it rightly, it could be a servant. It could be a servant for you. But if you use it wrongly, it could be a bad boss. You could be a slave when you search only for money instead of God. Because God is the one who gives you money. God is the one who gives you life. Don't be afraid. Oops, why it's right there. Oops. Council and stewardship, page 148, uh, paragraph 4, it says, The desire to accumulate wealth is an original affection of our nature implanted there by our Heavenly Father. Wow. So, the desire is okay. Desire to accumulate wealth is an original affection of nature implanted, implanted by our Heavenly Father. Is that amazing? But is that the end? Is that the end of the quote? It doesn't mean that. Is it, it, um, I mean, does that mean that we could be wealthy? Hmm, let's let's check it out. For noble ends. <sighs> yes, you can have a lot of money, but when you have a lot of money, it's not about self. It's not about for yourself to enjoy yourself is to give it back to God. When God trusted you with a lot of money, you have to remember that that is not your money. That is God's money for for God's work out there that are dying searching for truth. We're so the Adventists, we're blessed with books. We're blessed with Ellen White books. And I'm also blessed with that. But few of them read them, sadly. We're, we, want, we want to grow in Christ, but few accept change. We want to be happy in Christ, but we accept pain. We, we refuse to have pain. Do you see that? 
Don't be afraid. Again, I'm not talking about prosperity gospel, but I'm talking about how God, how faithful it is He to us. Ellen White, in her book, Christ's Object Lessons, page 114. In his prayer to the Father, Christ gave to the world a lesson. A what? A lesson which should be graven on mind and soul. This is, this is life eternal, he said, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. John 17, verse 3. This is true education. It imparts power. The experimental knowledge. What's the experimental knowledge? Of God and of Jesus Christ, whom He has sent, transform man into the image of God. It gives to the, it gives to the man the mastery of himself, bringing every impulse and passion of the lower nature under the control of the higher powers of the mind. It makes its possessor a son of God and an heir of heaven. It brings him into communion with the mind of the infinite and opens to him the rich treasures of the universe. A lesson. A lesson of, of um, what? Experimental knowledge, for this is the true education. What is it? What is the, um, what is the experimental knowledge? Brothers and sisters, we need to know what is experimental knowledge. The experimental knowledge of God, of, of Jesus Christ, who he has sent transformed into his image. is that Jesus Christ he has sent transformed men into the image of God, is that this is not just knowledge, but an experimental kind of knowledge. An experiment, experiment has something to do with trying something with consequences of either success or failure. Mere knowledge is believing that God won't fail us, but experimental knowledge is putting into work and seeing for yourself First hand, that was, and that what he promises true. Isaiah 45, verse 22 and 23. Look unto me, and ye be safe, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. That unto me every, every knee shall bow, every thing shall serve that I am God. The work of a ministry, the work of a mission is like a walk in water in Peter experience. Peter, the apostle of Jesus Christ. Can someone... Um, Skip the next, um, next presentation. Yes. Let's open, the, let's open our Bible in Matthew 14, 27 to 29. Matthew 14, verse 27. If you're there, say amen. If you're not there, say have mercy. Matthew 14, verse 27 till 29. It says, it's about Jesus walking on the water. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, so this story is after, the, after God um, feed the 5,000, Jesus, um, he, went, he went somewhere else, and um, the disciples, they're trying to, to go back with their boat, and they went to the sea. It's not a sea, actually. It's like a big lake. And, by the way, but straightway, verse 27, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come into thee on the water. And he said, ah, that word, come. 
And when Peter was come down of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind burst out, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched for his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore this thou doubt? Jesus said, Come. And that would have to be proven true, for he is faithful. He had to be put to a test that he wasn't going to fail. Although walking on water is a sure failed experiment in the human system, we cannot walk on water because that's impossible. Because God, but God said everything is possible in him. Amen? We can't all imagine how happy Peter was to actually walk on water. Yes, he became too overconfident and he flinched, but Jesus was there to help him along. Jesus is like, I mean, sorry. Peter, he like, it is, he's like you and me. When he stepped out from the boat, this boat, boat means your, boat means it's your, your comfort zone. When you're in the boat, you're safe. You know, you're not drowned in the sea, you're bait because you're safe in the boat, and that is your comfort zone. But God wants us all to step out from the boat, to step out from your comfort zone and start walking on water. You step on the boat and stop walking on water. Why? You step out and walk on water. Peter has, Peter, Peter, he had, he had problems like you and me. Peter, he had a lot of doubts like you and me. Peter, he had a lot of worriedness like you and me. But when he stepped out of the boat, God said, come. When we step out from the boat, we walk on water. We see Jesus say, coming, come, Peter. It's to show how faithful is he in, his, in our life. But praise the Lord, he did it. In the, middle of the, in the middle of them, when he was walking out, he, he drowned. Why he drowned? Because when he was stepping, experiencing, the experiencing the knowledge, experiencing walking through water, the impossible thing, yes, there's consequences. But God is always there. And Peter said without, he drowned. He drowned because while he was experiencing walking with God, he tilt back. Look at back, and he looked back and saw and look at the boat. It's like giving, hey, look at me. I can walk on water. Look at me. I have experienced everything with God. When the spirit, when the when when he had that spirit, he drowned. Why? Because walking with God, we need to be humble. We don't need to show to others. That, hey, I've done everything with God. Hey, I'm, I'm a Sabbath keeper. I'm vegetarian. Hmm. I, 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 I memorized all the verse. I've done everything, Lord. But Jesus said to the young rich man, you have done everything. But one thing behind you. He said this to the young rich man because this young rich man loves his, all his treasures. If it's, if it's you and me, he will ask the same thing. Abraham, you're good in everything. Oh, you're, you're good speaking in the pulpit. You're talking about me. But behind you, oh, you're so lazy. You're very, you lie to me every time. You're, you're not faithful in me. I want you to think about that. Are we true Christians? I like how Pastor Ed said that being a true Christian is having his character, Christ-like character, which, mean, which means what? Matthew 5, 6, 7. If someone, if someone steal your shirt, what do you do? I will steal him another shirt from him. No. You give him another coat. If someone slapped you in your face, what will you do? 
Turn your cheek another. To be, to be honest, right now, probably to be honest, I was slapping back. Black. <laughs> Talking about flesh. But God said no. This is the experience. This is the experience. Walking with God is to is to die in Christ, to die in your flesh. Because we're born by flesh. To order to, to live by the Spirit, our flesh must die. And how, how are we going to do that? To look unto, look unto Jesus every day. Matthew 5, 6, 7. The Walden Seas back then. They're separated. They're separated. Why? Because have, they have the truth of God. The Walden Seas, they have to live 1,000 feet above sea level. They're, they're, they're sent it there so they, they will not spread the gospel to the city. And what do they do? They take Matthew 5, 6, 7. They slip into bread. They, they tell the children to memorize that, Matthew 5, 6, 7, because that is the core of the Bible. Yes, we may know Daniel 8. Yes, we may know 2032. We, we may know sanctuary. We know all these things. But if, but if we don't live Matthew 5, 6, 7, it's, it's, it's nothing. You understand? I'm not saying that the prophecy, I'm not saying that all the theory is bad. No, it is very good. But the end, the end of the prophecy is walking with God. If you know this prophecy, Daniel 8, you know, oh, I know all this. This is a good knowledge. But the true knowledge, the true education is experimental knowledge. Just walk with God on water. Oh, we have mercy. Walking water, water is impossible. But, but God says everything is possible with me. Do you want to walk with God? Do you want, do you want to let, let, your, um, let your flesh die? Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, ye. I will help thee, ye. I will uphold thee by the right hand of my righteousness. Oh, have mercy. Jesus. When Peter drowned, Jesus took his Peter. As with his right hand of righteousness. When you drown, when you have mistakes, Jesus will... Lift your arm with your right hand of righteousness. Don't be afraid. Fear not, for I am your God. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. It's probably it's crazy when the disciples, when, when they're in the boat, Peter, you're crazy walking in water. God, you're crazy. That's impossible. But God said, what is foolish unto men is what? It's wise for God. What is wise for men is foolish to God. We're not smart, my brothers and sisters. We, we're not smart. We even don't know what's the bottom of the deep bottom of the sea. We don't know what the space would like. I don't know. You see all the, the space there have stars and everything. But that's not all about it. We will know everything when we come to Christ. When in the end, when you, when you surrender to Christ every day and you, and you committed your life to God and be consistent. And in the end of the time when you saw God for His second coming, in the skies with all angels. When we spread the gospel to the world, it's very good. It's very good to spread the gospel. Jesus told the disciples to spread the gospel to the world. But before spreading the gospel to the world, let us live the gospel. It is serious. Because the, because the world is watching. The world is watching. The world is watching through Seventh-day Adventists. The world is watching. 
The world is watching through me because they want to see Christ in you, the hope of glory. By beholding, we become changed. Philippians 3, verse 8 and 14. I would like to read that. Philippians 3, verse 8 to 14. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lust for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but the which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of the God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being made comfortable unto His death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, is that I may have apprehended the that for which also I am apprehended of God Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting loose things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as perfect, be thus minded, if and in any, and, sorry, and if any, any blah, blah, blah. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. The knowledge of Peter must have developed, developed is what Paul says that we read. I count everything but lust for the excellency of knowing Christ Jesus. The kind of life where you consider everything but a loss means you no longer fear about the future about not having means, not having food or clothes. It is the life that can only be achieved in Jesus. That's a life in spirit, not in flesh. Amen. Jesus answered, Verily, 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 I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which born for the flesh is flesh, and that which born of the spirit is spirit. I can imagine the reformers in ancient times when they were placed a stake to be burned for what they believed. They were singing as the fire was consuming them. There must be peace in them, so deep that the feeling of pain simply vanished. God helped up to put it all away. Explain how the... I told you that all the Wallachian kids... They, they memorize 5, 6, 7, right? They memorize the Matthew 5, 6, 7. Try to read Matthew 5, 6, 7. I, I, I love to read Matthew 5, 6, 7 because when you just live that one word, that one word when Jesus said, if someone slap you in the face, give you another cheek. If you just live it, God is happy about that. When we spread the gospel to the world, when we spread, we spend our time outside there. Always remember to put God first in your life because we're nothing. Without Him, we're nothing. But through Him, He changed us, us to be something. Matthew 14, 27, when that, that verse, he said, come. Oh, I have to lose everything. Yeah. That's all the verse. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Deuteronomy 30, 31, verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not. Nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, he is that doth go with thee, or nor forsake thee. 2 Timothy 2, verse 13. If we believe not, yet he abideth a faithful, 
he cannot deny himself. Even though we, we still did not believe in God, he's still faithful in us. Lamentation 3, verse 22 of 23. It is of the Lord, mercies that we are not consumed, because this compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. God gives us mercy every day so we can learn how to grow with Christ. You know, this, this morning when I was um, working in the ad, ad building, the advanced building, as, um, as a Hadassah, he, Hadassah, sorry, he was working the computer, I saw a picture, a tree, and it says, Grow. tree is like you and us. I mean, a tree is like you and me. We are his seeds. We are God's seeds. Even though the world, other people, they buried us, they don't know that we are seeds. We grow in Christ. And growing with Christ, you need what? You need time. I like how how our brother David said to be patient, everything. Yes, we have to be friendly with time. That's a problem in this youth. Why? Especially to me too. We cannot be friendly because we, when we want something, we want it now. Can you imagine if you, if you plant a seed and the next day it grows very big like that fairy tale nonsense? But that's not that's not how faith works. Faith works with time, with experience. You cannot buy experience in the store. You cannot buy experience. Experience can be found only with Jesus Christ. Experience, when you walk, when you walk in the water with something, something um, impossible things, that is how, that is one thing how you grow in Christ. You see, experience. Even the world knows that experience is the best teacher. Because by experience, you have that knowledge. Before I close, I want to tell you something. In this world, we have two groups. Only two groups in this world. The light and the darkness, Cain and Abel, wheat and tares, the five foolish women and the five wise women. What else? The shepherd and the lambs. No, I'm not offending you, women. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not offending you, five foolish women. Five, no. I'm just um, I'm just like a coincidence. I go there, but the f- the the lamb and the goat. All this, only two groups. The spirit and the flesh, only two groups. Now, which group are you in? Which group are you in? When you you ask God for faithfulness, He will give it unto you. I'll tell you a story. A true story. I love true stories. I love true story. I love true story movies. I don't watch movies though, but when it comes to true story movies like Hacksaw Ridge, oh, it's wonderful. Not because of the bam, 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 no. It's because how faithful is God is through Him. I like the book where um, we read the book of God Smuggler. There's a, there's a quote right there that He's mentioned that he loves he loves walk with he loved walking with God by experience experience through um, uh, what what do you say I, I read that book like today it's from the Wake of the Dragon there's there's that there's that quote that he said that he loves do he loves experience with God because by experience with God the impossibility becomes possible okay the story is about the work the first week I'm in Glaw. 
<laughs> okay? I'm, I'm homeschooled since eight years old. I, I've never go to school, even in Indonesia, no, never. I, I went to school, international school, when I was um, like elementary, but that was like back then. So I didn't have any experience to go to school. My first week of school, <sighs> it's like I, it's like I did. I, I I drank some like a nitro for car, you know, boom 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 boom. It's like ah, oh, stop. The nitro fluid. <laughs> I said, Lord, what am I gonna do? But thank God, I came to Gla. I, I'm not alone. I went with Seth Hobrick. He's my friend. He's my close friend. If my, if my friend's watching, hey, Seth, I'm not offending you, no. But, Seth, I depend so much into him. When I came to Gloria, I said, Seth, I've never go to school. I've never go to school in my country. It's, <laughs> I, this is my first time going to school, and this is my first time going to school, a school in America. Can you imagine? I don't know, I, I don't know how, how, the, how the program, how the st- system is in the school, but then I know, I praise God. But then I asked to Seth, Seth, you're my hope. Please tell me how. And my, and my, and my Seth said, oh, I got you, man. You know, I, I'll get you, I will, I will tell you everything. Okay, the first week, um, first day, the second week, the third week. I met you guys, even though, um, eh. We were not too friendly, right? <laughs> but not, I mean, describing not, meaning that not too friendly is like, we don't know each other. And um, I said to Seth, Seth, how do you do this? Do what? <laughs> English class. I have to write a lot of things to do. And Seth said, oh, I can help you. you know? He was like my, he was like my, re, do, you know, do you know Grammarly? Yes, he is like my uh, he's like my grammarly person. Real, real. I mean, he's real like reality grammarly in my life. So he will check one by one. I will sit there together. I said, "Is this right? Is this the right sentence?" I said, "No, that's not right." He will correct me and everything. But then, a few months later, a few weeks later, he went to me and said, "Abraham, I don't know what to say." I might leave the school. When he heard, when he said that, my heart broke. Why? What am I going to do? He said, I'm sorry, I, I have things to do, so I can't continue school at GLA. At first, the first day I was like, okay. The next day he went out. We're not, we're not roommates, but our room are closed in each other. My room is like um, very closed. It's like when I open the door, I go outside, that's his room. We're not roommates, but you know, we're closed. I saw he packed all his stuff out. I helped him packing his stuff out, put in the car, I was still, you know, I was like, I was that sad. It's like, I can't handle this by my own. But when the next day he left, I came back. I forgot that he left. I opened his door, and it's nothing. And that is the time when I cried. I said, Lord, what have you done to my life? I was angry to God. I, to be honest, I mocked God. How could you do this, God, to me? How could you leave me to, to this school alone? That first week, I, I don't have peace. I didn't have peace in my life. I went to the cafeteria. I went out. I sat under, under the tree. And I started to eat by myself for a week. And I was sitting I, I, I'm so angry. I'm like, I, I'm like, I was like very crazy. You know, if someone, they look at me, I was like talking by myself. But actually, I'm talking with God. I said, Lord, how could you do this in my life? You're not fair. I was hoping 
that we could graduate together with Seth. And I said to him, I said, I said to him like this, but you took him away. And I was sitting there under the tree. And I'm still angry. I was still angry. But then, there's a tiny bird came there. A little tiny bird, very cute bird. A tiny bird, he has like a white thing in his, um, around his neck. I don't know what kind of a bird. If Mr. Carter here, probably he knows. <laughs> a little bird, it's like brown, all brown, white in the feathers and white neck in his neck. And this bird looks up to me. And I feel that God is speaking to me. He said, Abraham, look at that bird. I love that bird. I, I feed him every day. I'm faithful in that, with that bird. Now, can you imagine how much love for you, Abraham? How much faithful for you? And I see that bird, I cried. It's like God slapped me in the face. Bam! I did not slap God back, no. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But when I see that bird, I cried again. I cried because why? If God cared about that little bird, He also cared about you. Bird is His creation. Yes. We are also His creation. But we are special. Amen? Animals, they cannot choose. They cannot choose. They don't know what is right and wrong because they're animals. But we are created with choices. We know what is wrong. We know what is right. We have the power of choice. We were created a little bit lower than the angels. We are special for Him. We are valuable for Him. We are precious for Him. When I see that bird, I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you for being faithful in my life. Lord, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me sometimes I, I, I'm not faithful in you. Forgive me sometimes I, not sometimes, I mocked Him. Sometimes I, 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 I forgive me, I mocked you, Lord. But God said, what? Before you ask forgiveness, I have forgiven you. Don't, please, please take Jesus. I like how Mr. Record said, please, don't take Jesus for granted. And that is very true. Because he is your, he is your only friend. When you have problems, he is there. When, 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 when there's um, something bad happened, he is there. You have parents, right? You have brother and sister. We have father and mother. He loves you. Can you imagine how much, how, how much love is God into you? He is the Alpha and Omega. He knows everything about you since you're in the womb. He knows everything about you. Now you have to choose. Either you follow Him or yourself. Satan, he does not, he does not need followers. Satan is enough saying that just follow yourself and you're good enough. Why? Because when we follow, when we, when we walk to ourselves instead of walking with Jesus, we will forget Jesus. I like how Pastor Ed says, what? When Jacob, God gave, God gave a dream, a ladder came to heaven. Sometimes we, we make our own ladder. That's a very good explanation. We make our own way. We are make, we're making our own way. We're making our ladder to come to, to earn heaven. Jesus said, you cannot earn, earn heaven without me. Jesus said, you cannot walk on water without me. It's only by me you can do everything. Only in Christ. Please take Jesus. 
Never, ever forget Jesus in your life. Put him first. Joy. Have you ever bought joy before? What's sent for joy? Joy. Jesus, others, and you, the last. When you, if you want joy, put Jesus first. Others second, meaning what? Serve other. People are dying right there. People are dying right there to find, to find them the truth of God. It is time for us to reflect His character. Amen? What would Jesus do? Have you read that? WWGD? JD? What would Jesus do if you slap in the face? He will not slap you back. Instead, He will take you by the hand and give you the expected end. As you close your eyes, I want you to close your eyes. I want to close your eyes and think and ponder. How faithful is God in my life? I want you to think, I want you to ponder, saying, Lord, thank you for being faithful in my life. I may, I may, be have, a, I may have um, problems. I do have problems. I have problems. I have, um, I have some um, 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 problems or um, mistakes in my life, but Lord, help me to overcome this. I may, I may have an F in my grades. To be honest, I have an F in my grades, but praise the Lord. Why is it praise the Lord? Because He wants me to experience, to have time to grow in Him. If you don't have an F in your grade, also praise the Lord. Because he wants you to be consistent. And when you close your eyes, think again. How great is God is in your life. Great is thy faithfulness. When you hear, when you listen to this song, great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for being grateful in our life, for being faithful in our lives. We're nothing. We're human. We're full of sin. We're just like a, a pile of mud full of sin in our lives. But Jesus said, I give you hope. I give you another chance that you may come to me, brothers and sisters. Freshmen, you are the future of this school. Freshmen, when other, other students will come to Glaw, you should reflect Christ's character in your life. So when other students, they came to Gla, they will see that Gla is a great school, a great school because God is, God first is great in this school. This school is teaching you to be, a, to be faithful in God. This school teach, to, teaches you to be a missionary. Missionary is not always out there. Missionary is also inside. But when you, when you decide to go outside and be a missionary, go! You could be a missionary as a student. You could be a missionary as a teacher. We are all missionaries. We were born for a mission, for a mission and vision. There is one soul. There is one soul that wants to know God. I believe there's one soul in this world that wants, even not one soul, many souls. But when one soul found Jesus, heaven is rejoicing. Jesus, all the heavens are rejoicing, for He is glad that because of that one soul and because of God through us in our lives, He found Jesus. Let us found Jesus in our lives. Let us take Him 
because God will hold you with your right hand, with His righteous hand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything. Thank you for being faithful even though we're not faithful in you. Lord, you said you had not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Sometimes we, we want to, we want to um, be uh, successful. We, we're too focused we're too focused in our lives. We're, we're, we're too focused in our dreams. I'm not saying that our, your, our dreams and our, fo- our, um, our dreams and our, um, um, our achievement is bad. No. But please help us to overcome sin. Help us to focus the one who gives you the achievement, the one who gives you the dreams. Lord, we're weak. We're nothing. We're created by dust. But Lord, I believe that there's one soul in this room that need your help. That needs your help. Lord, bless that person. Bless us all that we that we can come back to you, Lord. Sometimes we want to find our own way. Sometimes we want to do it by ourselves. But God said, you cannot do it by yourself, but only through me. God, thank you for being a good father in our life. I pray in the loving name of Jesus Christ who died in the cross, all your children say, Amen. God bless you all. Thank you, Abraham. God is faithful. All right, so um, now we're um, going to transition to our agape feast. Um, It's over in the gym. And so as you make your way out, continue to think about the message. Continue to think about God's faithfulness in your life. And as you get over there, um, just let the silence. Sometimes silence can be uncomfortable, right? But just let the silence, um, enjoy the silence, and um, be, um, be attentive to God's voice. Um, as you think about the message. So you can make your way over there at this time.